So our objective today is to learn about. Oops, this is not my good pen. To um, learn about qualitative graphs, or yeah, qualitative graphs. And also how to interpret. Qualitative graphs. So we are in a new packet, and this packet is the lesson nine from, and this is going to be the publisher that um, this we're going to get textbooks next year. The, using this book. Yeah. So this is lesson nine, and this one's called California Math. Now, I don't have any access for you online for this one, so that's why I keep giving you guys all the packets so that you can go back and refer to it. So let's write down a definition for qualitative, qualitative graphs. So a qualitative graph, these are graphs uh, used to, to represent situations Yes. Uh, I would hold on to any packet I've given you because you could be having a final and that's like your textbook. So I, you might want to get yourself a separate folder and kind of organize them by lesson um, and have them ready when you, I ask. Because I am going to give you a final. Okay, so it's going to cover everything we talked about. So it's graphs used to represent situations that may not have... <coughs> numerical values so that's kind of interesting or graphs in which numerical values are not included So a big difference in these types of graphs, even though we had data that we could graph, often you're not going to be given any data. You're simply going to be given the graph. And so all you're going to be given is the titles on the axes so you have an idea of what is going on in the problem, and then your job is to interpret. So the one graph that you guys just did would look more like this. Let me go back to black. where you would have time here in seconds, and then you could have percent downloaded here. No numbers on the axes, but you would show the relationship that existed. Okay. Yeah, that's from what we just did on the first page. So what's missing is there's no numbers on the actual axes. Ryan stood up. And all your job is to go, well, it seemed to have quite a few download in the beginning and then nothing downloaded for a bit. And then there was another surge of downloads and then nothing happened for a bit. And there was a last surge. So there's like surges of downloads in three different times and two periods of just nothing happening. Oh, that's okay. I'll get them. Thank you, though. Okay. So what we're going to do now is you can see that there was some sort of relationship going on between uh, time and the percent downloaded. So what I'm going to do is give you different types of graphs, and we're going to try to figure out what's happening. So let's do this one. So these are not going to require a uh, graph paper. Now I'm going to write these horizontal. So this is about water level and this is over time. Okay. And this graph is about 
water level in a bathtub. Okay. So water level in a bathtub. So what do you see is happening over time to the water level? Okay, so we have a period of increase. We have a period of no change. Stays the same. And then we have a period of decreasing. So could you put together a scenario of what was happening based on this graph to water level in the bathtub? Taylor. So filling up the tub with water. So we'll say soaked in the tub, okay? Okay. Okay, so then uh, let the water drain out. Okay. So how these connect is this is the increasing. I'll put it here. You're going from no water to maximum water for the tub. Not necessarily overflowing, hopefully. However, in the case of my daughter, sometimes. And then soaked in the tub, that's the no change. Because there's no more water running at that point. And then letting the water drain out, that would be the decreasing portion of the graph. Okay. All right, let's try another one. I will hold off. All right, let's try this one. So this one is temperature, so I'm going to write it this way. This is time of day. And our graph looks like this. So the scenario is, this is temperature throughout the day. We can kind of surmise that by based on the titles of the axes. Okay, so what do you notice in our graph? Joy? Okay, so we do have a period of increasing, right? And then what? We, we had a period of decreasing. Now, did it have a flat top? No. 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 So it was kind of like a fluid change. It wasn't like got to this temperature, stayed constant, and then psh, like was in the tub. So it's like we do have a peak. Could be. But it was never stagnant. The temperature never seemed to stay there. So how could we, in words, describe the change in the temperature over time? Okay. Jonathan? Well, we're not going to put in actual numbers because we don't have actual numbers. Okay. So we're just going to, in general, describe what we think happened. Okay. So the temperatures, temperature... Uh, 
Well, again, we don't know where the starting point is. So that's kind of our, our issue of, I mean, the low temperature might have been 80 degrees, okay? The high temperature could have been 120, and it comes back to 80. We don't know that number. So cold may be in, in too much of a qualifier. So let's just say the temperature um, increased over time. That's the f increasing part. And then what happened? Okay. Did we get to a top temperature? Yeah. Okay, so we should say that. Um, it hit a top temperature. So that would be the peak. Then decreased steadily until it reached the beginning temperature of the day. That would be the decreasing portion. So again, it started and ended at the same place. What that start and end number is, we have no idea. We have no idea what the peak is, but we do know that we had steady increase. We got to top and we went down. It's kind of like going on a roller coaster. Oh, and then you start on your ride. Okay. Okay, one more where I'm going to give you a graph, and your job is oops, to interpret what was going on. And then we're going to go the other direction. I'm going to give you a situation, and you're going to have to come up with what the graph would look like. So this is sales, and this is time. So this is revenue, which is a fancy, oh, let's go green. Revenue is a fancy way of saying money brought in. Uh, from a local clothing store. Okay, so just looking at the graph, what do you notice is happening with the sales over time in this one? Samantha? Um, the sales increase and then decrease and then increase. Okay, so we have an increase. Now, can you describe that decrease? Is it a huge decrease? Is it a small decrease? Okay. So we have an increase in the sales from the beginning. We have a small decrease. Oh, sorry. And then what? So we increase during this period. Okay. Okay, so then we had what they call flat sales or stagnant sales when sales aren't really doing. So we have maybe a period of no sales. And we have yet another increase. Okay. So how would you describe that over time? Okay, so what would be, if you had to give a report to the manager, what would you say? Now, we don't know how much time this is. We don't know if this is a day or a week or a month or a year. We don't know. Okay, so let's say you're the manager and you need to present this data to your boss. What are you going to say to the boss? Joe? He had a 
had a, um, we were, we had good sales for a little while, and we had like a little lull, and we were selling for a little while. Ooh, I like that word. And then we increased a lot. Okay. And then we went selling for a little bit, and then we increased again. Okay, so we had good sales for a little while. That was the first increase, the red one. I like how, Joe, you're already a salesman. Because he said in the next bit, he says, good sales for a little while, but then a slight lull. <laughs> it, was, it was a short period of time. I have to agree with that. Because it wasn't as long as the sales had been. I mean, if it had dropped down to the bottom, that would have been sad. Super sad. Okay. So that was the small decrease. Okay. A lull. L-U-L-L. -L -L. A lull. Oh, okay. Yeah, like a lullaby. It slowly puts you to sleep. You know. Okay. And then, what did you, how did you describe the next increase? Uh, the next increase, another um, pretty big increase. Yeah, it was a pr pretty sharp increase, wasn't it? It was longer than the last one, too. Then we had a longer period of increased sales. That was our green increase. And then what did you say that came after that? Uh, the sales, like the sales stopped, but they didn't increase. Okay, so sales stopped for a short period. Now, lull is just like a slow decrease. Lull, L-U-L-L. -L -L. But this was a stoppage. <laughs> there was nothing. It flatlined there for a short period of time. See what color was that? Uh, pink. So that was no sales. Let's see, stopped for a short period, but have I'm going to throw in my business word steadily increased from that point. And the reason why I'm saying steadily is notice that there's an arrow cap. And it's just, it's going up. <laughs> there, that's it. It's going up. And that would have been our blue increase. Okay. So that's part of what you're going to do on your homework tonight is being given a graph. Can you come up with a scenario of what happened? Can you describe that graph? Okay. Yes, ma'am. If there wasn't an arrow cap on it, what would that, in, like, what would that tell you? Like, well, you would say, uh, and sales increased to the end of that period of time. Because that's all we know. This is as far as the graph can go, okay? Hopefully, it would be that they're going to show steady increases. All right, everybody good? Okay. So here comes the other direction. I'm going to give you a scenario. Uh, tennis ball. Is dropped onto the floor. On each successive, that means one after the other, bounce, oops, bounce, it rebounds to a height less than its previous bounce until it rests on the floor. Mm -hmm. Okay. What do you think this graph is gonna look like. Okay. So remember, where does the ball begin? 
Yeah, it begins up here. You can't bounce a ball from the floor. <laughs> so, ah, okay. So we have this scenario, and we're going to create our graph. The graph needs two labels. Okay, it's going to need two labels. So what's going to be the horizontal label? Not height. What's it going to be? Okay. Okay. Time. Now, do we know if it's in minutes, seconds, hours? We don't know that, so we don't add anything. We just say it's time. What's the vertical? Okay. Uh, not so much how high it bounces. What height compared to what? Floor. So we could say distance from the floor. And Sophia, with your hands, because you did this already once, show us what you think this ball is going to be doing in this table. Okay, so we've got it goes down, it goes up and down, up and down. Now, it is not a peak. Okay? What happens is that it has to hit the floor, right? And then it bounces up, but it's a little bit lower. So because of gravity, it's going to pull it back down to the earth, and it's going to be what we call a parabola shape. And, and, and and until it just ends and it doesn't bounce anymore okay so that could be that graph for that scenario okay um let's see Ooh, i've got one more no because we don't have any numbers they didn't tell us any numbers but we can just give an idea of what it looks like okay everybody good oh lucas is almost there The idea is just to get that it continually goes down. But the other thing that I'm noticing with yours, yours are almost like separated from each other. They're actually connected. The path is boom, boom, boom. Okay. All right, so this one, ooh, let's see if somebody can come up with this one. A child swings on a swing. Yes. Um, not necessarily. Not necessarily. A child swings on a swing. Okay. So let's think about what would be the two things we would compare of a child swinging on a swing. What do you think would be... Okay. So think about the one we just did. Okay, yes, because you're just reading it out of the packet. Mm -hmm. A child is going to be on the swing. They're going to be a certain distance from the ground. And we do have time. And then they did add the word elapsed. Now, are they going to be on the ground on the swing? No. Again, a swing is off the ground, otherwise you couldn't swing very well. That would not be very comfortable, okay? Now, it's this swing up, swing back, swing up, swing back. So the distance is far away from the ground and closer, far away and closer. So it's kind of like the other one, except you've got a little bit, as they're going more and more, and then they try to jump off, right? So mine does. So I can extend this. So over time, when they're first beginning, they, they're not that high off the ground. But as they keep going, they get a little higher. And then they keep going, they get a little higher. Okay. So over the time elapsed, and then maybe just a short period of time, somebody was watching them, that's what they saw. Okay. All right. So what is your homework? Because that's what you're going to practice both of these tonight. <laughs>